To be honest, the advice I give students in terms of what eventually will be the education, kind of hands-on education that they can get that doesn't exist in the numbers, great numbers now that it did before, uh, is kind of the same thing. I tell students, and this kind of, <clears throat> this kind of eliminates the people who are not really meant to be in that part of the music world. I tell them, um, first of all, to go inside themselves, you know, search your heart, find out whose music is really touching you, which is a more thought out way of being in control of your life than say the way I did it. The way I did it was discovering Monty Alexander and discovering this guy and that guy, you know, it just kind of all happened. Uh, and it can still happen that way, and it does. But we can be a little bit more in control of, of the, our paths now. So I will tell the student, go inside yourself. Don't think about what you believe you're capable of doing. Don't think about what's out there. Don't think, no. Nah, figure out what it is that your heart is telling you that you want to be a part of. So let's say it's, Terrence Blanchard, let's say it's Branford Marsalis, let's say it's Cedar Walton, let's say it's Joe Lovano, you know, <clears throat> by figuring out who it is that you want to be a part of, whose music you want to be a part of, now your, your path is clear. Let's say it's Branford Marsalis. What does that mean? That means that I have to buy every Branford Marsalis recording I can find. I have to learn every song he's ever done. I have to get comfortable with his music. I have to go hear him live every chance I get. And I introduce myself to him. Hi, my name is John. I love your music. And I'm, it's, it's my dream to play with you. And I'm learning everything you've ever done. Now, when he needs a bass player, he's not going to go, who do I call? He's going to go, who's that guy that said he's learning everything I've ever done? You know, now's, maybe I should give this, this guy a call and see what he's about. Now, I already know what's going to happen. The same thing that happened to me more than likely will happen to that other person. I was crazy about Oscar Peterson and a couple of other people. So I, I learned every Oscar Peterson song and arrangement I could, thinking to myself, Ray Brown's not with him anymore. He's got this guy named Nils Henning Orsted Pedersen, who, you know, at some point he's probably going to quit or leave or whatever, and then I'll have a shot. Who knows? <clears throat> I had my my focus, and, I, and nobody told me this. I was just doing it because it was fun. I loved the music. It touched me. And then, in route to that Oscar Peterson goal, I discovered Monty Alexander. Suddenly, I wasn't thinking about Oscar Peterson. And because of that Oscar Peterson focus, my level was rising. So at a level six, whatever that is, your, your world in terms of playing with people is only at a level six. But by focusing on those other levels and incrementally allowing yourself to get there, your level rises. And uh, because of the Oscar Peterson work that I was doing, I was now able to hang with Imani Alexander. And... Likewise, because of the things that um, I was interested in, along with my Monty Alexander focus, I was now able to to really get into uh, Cal Basie stuff. You know, so now without thinking about being with Cal Basie, to be honest, Duke Ellington was my dream. I wanted to play with Duke Ellington, but he died when I was in college. Well, before that time. I was listening to Duke Ellington records, learning his music, doing all this stuff, and learning Count Basie stuff too, because that was the other guy. So lo and behold, because of all that homework, see my point? By having a focus, it allows you to really get what your path is about. And that's what I tell students. And the cool thing about that is, 
everybody's path is different. Everybody's choices are different. I'll be in a room of 40 students and I'll say, you know what, let's just take a few minutes out and go around the room. Everybody tell me how you imagine, fantasize music to be a part of your life when you're out of here. One person will say, I want to play with Roy Hargrove. Another person will say, I want to do a cruise ship gig for a year and then move to Chicago and play local clubs. Another person will say, I want to start my own jazz choir. Another person will say, I want to conduct a choir in the church. Another person, everybody, and then when they're done, I go, what do I see here? No competition. <laughs> Here's a room full of people who all have different desires in terms of music and how music is going to be part of their life, and they're all different. No competition. So the hype that you hear in too many schools from too many teachers <clears throat> is truly that. It's hype. The teacher who says, man, it's rough out there. You know, there aren't enough gigs. It's doggy dog. It's not like it used to be. What are they doing? They are sharing with you, the student, their personal frustration with the music world. Their phone isn't ringing. So they start dissing the music world. I even hate to call it business. Uh, and they end up, I think, um, painting a very dark, bleak picture of jazz. Not true. I mean, I love Herbie, I love Wayne, I love Terrence, I love Christian Bride, I love, you know, the, the list, right? Do I only want to buy their records the rest of my life till I'm dead? <laughs> Do I only want to go to their concerts for the rest of my life till I'm dead? No. There's plenty of room in jazz festivals and clubs for new people's music to be discovered. So...